how's going guys another limited banner and another should you pull this banner video so um <laughs> about this banner i was really hesitating on what i wanted to say with this with these operators and what i want to say about this banner or should you pull or not but it actually happened occurred to me that i can't really have a simple answer that i usually have because of the circumstances of the operators and the coming like um banners schedules so even though i might be able to put this into like two videos i just want to get through them all together at once so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through the operators as usual and then you can decide on well if you're already going to pull them or not but if you're already going to put, if you weren't if you didn't know uh, maybe you can listen to what i say and then decide and then later on i can say i can provide you some information right where um you might reconsider with those circumstances in mind if you want to pull this banner or not but um i do want to make this video a bit shorter because i'm currently not feeling so well so in order to make you know this video before the banner even comes out um i want to just get this done and then i'm just gonna take a break after that so all that being said i think i should just go straight to the operators and then explain to you guys why you should pull this banner or not yeah our first operator is going to be ho Hayok. i don't know if that's how you pronounce her name i'm really sorry if i if i butchered it but she is a core caster just like a fella except that her whole her whole kit is not really about dealing damage there is a lot more that's involved with his whole kit and mechanic but we'll have to go through those with her talent and her skills so ho Hayak's talent first talent is that when she hits an enemy that is in air her attack is increased to 120 percent and she will silence them for three seconds so this is a very simplistic skill and you kind of see where this is going right air units now her second talent is that all enemies within her attack area that has more than 80 percent of their max hp will decrease their weight by one level now this is a very interesting skill because um you can pair that with weedy for better push or you can pair that with irene for lifting enemies up in there for longer you decide but you can see where the whole kit is going i would say the moment i mentioned irene lifting enemies into the air now her first skill is a very simplistic skill, I would say. Um, natural region, automatically triggered. At M3, it costs 7 SP. And when triggering this skill, her next attack will cost, uh, will deal damage to an extra target for 300% 300, uh, of her attack as R damage. And if she only hits one target, so if there's only one target in her attack range, she will let the she will levitate that enemy for up to four seconds and you can charge this skill by up to three times at m3 um from the point that i have an m3 this skill you can tell that i really wouldn't recommend this skill because it's really simplistic and you don't really have too much control because it is a full automatically automatic skill so if you really want to like just have constant lev levitation on enemies i would suggest you not because um the problem with lifting enemies up is that let's say um she will let's say prioritize the enemy that is currently blocked by your defender now or your guard by lifting them up your defend your guard or defenders will block another enemy coming in their way and then the enemy that is in air will drop down and just walk by things like that happen all the time and it's just not really a good feeling to have so little control of how the enemies are behaving because this skill is fully automatic highly not recommended to use now skill two during the duration of her skill two she will have exchanged her uh, attack into nine hits like nine combo hits at each at 45 percent of her attack so 45 times uh 45 percent times nine hits which is you know, quite a bit good dps i would say but it will hit random targets within her attack area which i i don't know what to say not something i would like and every hit of her attack will have a 15 percent up to 15 percent chance to lift the enemy up for one second so again because it's 
randomness nature. I just, I just can't recommend this skill. Like, whenever there's, like, random and unpredictable parts, it's just really hard to recommend anyone to use these skills. And even if you're, like, a newbie starting at E1, probably wouldn't use this skill. Like, skill one is... skill Both skills are highly not recommended. I just wouldn't you recommend you to use whole here un unless you really know what you're doing. Now, third skill, as you can tell, that I have m 3 is actually her core skill, in my opinion, and I believe is also the skill that they showed off in the stream. So you roughly get the idea of it has increased attack area, similar to a AoE um, sniper like W or um, Meteorite, those kind of range snipers. Um, her attack interval is increased by 1.4 seconds, so quite long, actually. And her attacks is turned into throwing three tornadoes, one in each lane, because she um, her attack range is three lanes, right? Each with five columns, or three columns, each with five lanes. You get the point. And she shoots out three tornadoes, one in each lane, right? And the further those tornado travel travels, the higher the damage. And the damage is maxed at after it has traveled for three tiles and it will levitate the first target it hits for 2.2 seconds and deal up to 420 percent of her attack as arch damage at the furthest right like after um it has moved for three tiles but it's within closer you don't really know um there's actually one problem that i believe a lot of cns players had and we actually make it a meme into it's about a tornado being single target. <laughs> I think you guys probably also spot that within the show, skill showcase. And how should I put it? First of all, I have never seen a real life tornado so huge. And then once it hits an ant, it suddenly disappears. So I don't think tornadoes are single target to begin with, but um, it's just not that strong of a skill. Like I said, again, Levitating one enemy is just going to disrupt disrupt your you know flow. You're just going to make things a bit less predictable. Obviously, in this case, you're fully under control. So if you know perfectly what you're doing, let's say if you want to hit them all up and then you deal like extra air damage, let's say with um, AFL or operators like so that does extra damage to aerial units, airborne units, that is obviously a great choice. Other than that, um, I would actually use her in IS-3 after we get the ending 4 patch, we, which we don't have yet, and she works pretty well in IS-4. That's about the only two situations that I've ever used her and find her any good at all. And that is basically it. Oh, hey, yuck. Mm. It will depend on you if you really want to use her, but she's usable. Just with skill 3 only. Please don't try to fully rely on her other skills. Because skill 3 is basically the only useful skill. Now, our other operator. This, I believe, is the key operator that a lot of people are looking into. Yes, Ho Heyak has that really nice smile in the animation. I get that. But I believe most people are after Mulesis. And so, how can I put it this way? Milsis, as a tactician, has already one really strong point for her before anything, before we talk about anything. She's better than Vigil, right? So there's already a good point, and she's really cute. Now, what does it make her better than Vigil, though, right? Because we've had a four-star, a five-star, and a six-star tactician at this point, in, like, why would it be that I would choose Mulesis over other three that has came before her? Well, we'll have to talk about that, right? Now, Mulesis, her first talent is that the summon that she uses can use to can be used to replicate other operators that you have in your team right now. At E0, that, only, that copy only replicates 50% of their stats. At E1, 70%. At E2, 90%. So I think it would be obvious that if you're using this 
I would highly recommend you to copy, let's say, a caster or a basically caster, like a range operator, because you wouldn't really draw on an operator that has 50% of the stat to block enemies or deal damage. So artists would be the best, uh, uh, casters would be the best because you can deal arts damage, which is, you know, arguably the best. At E1, I would also suggest so. At E2, though, you can, you know, play around with other operators at um high enough level because there's actually another critical part about this operator is that you kind of don't want to use her in the early stage for something that is really important let's say like to tank enemies because like i said um even at e2 she only copies 90 percent of the stats and let's say if you're the operator that she's copying is only at e1 and she's e2 is that really worth it to bring her to e2 at like as your first e2 operator definitely not so in order to fully utilize Musis, in my opinion you first have to have other really strong operators that she can use to copy and then you level her so in that point of view i would really argue that she's not really the best if you're a beginner so if you're a beginner watching this video i would highly recommend you just build other operators first and then build muses down the road now her second talent is that um when she's carried in the team ryan labs operators will have minus two dp to deploy and the first ryan labs operator that you deploy will have a extra minus one so minus three dp really interesting sometimes useful now it's all about the skills isn't it right as usual so her first skill is that during the duration of her skill one which is 20 uh, 15 seconds she will recover 13 dp and her and the summon will have plus 50 percent attack and well, up to plus 50 percent attack and up to plus 35 attack speed this skill is actually pretty interesting, but I would recommend you to use this skill, well, to use Muses for DP region purposes, I would say, if you really, all you want is DP region. The whole point about it is the summon. But this skill is actually pretty interesting, I must say, because if you have a good caster or someone, and you can copy the caster and deal arch damage at increased 50% attack, and increase 50 percent uh increase 50 percent attacks and 50 attack speed that's actually quite a lot of dps but i would still go with skill three so because um skill three is actually just more unique so i would still just go with skill three don't recommend m3 at all um at if you're copying a melee operator i would say there is some maybe there is some stat beneficial like art where um you would actually want to use skill one over skill three maybe there might be a range where that might work but i just wouldn't bother because those rare, those situations are just so niche i wouldn't even consider them now her skill two. Oh, this is one of those skills that's really deceiving so the moment you activate this skill you will immediately gain 14 dp her and her summon will gain up to 50% 50, 50 attack. And when the summon is copying a melee operator, the summon will recover up to 5% of its HP per second and gain 25% uh, damage reduction. When she's when it's copying a ranged operator, the damage becomes uh, the attack that becomes double hit, but will attack random targets in the area. So like I said before, when you're doing grand damage to random targets, it's usually not a good thing. But with a melee operator, that actually makes the summon quite tanky. So if you really just want a blocking operator, this actually might work. And that would really be up to you, I would say. Um, personally, I still wouldn't use this skill because I really find there are some aspects of skill three that just completely pushes the first two skills out of my vision and just i will only look at skill 3 because skill 3 is just way too good in those situations now so after all of that emphasis on not using the first two skill how good is skill 3 once you activate skill 3 you will immediately gain 15 dp which is 
also about the same um wait time as skill 2 so you get the same amount of dp and Mulesis and the summon will both have plus 50 percent attack that is also the same but this time around if the summon is copying a melee operator it will suck in all enemies from eight towers surrounding her once every two seconds so this is a gathering ability and it, she will it will stun all enemies that it is blocking so let's say if you copy a four block operator like hoshi with module you can stun four operators while sucking them in so you can actually do this across three lanes if the map allows i think that already proves itself more worthy because stunning the enemy rather than just blocking them i think that is really that is really good but where i would consider this to be this skill to be at its best is when it's copying range operators so if the summon is copying a range operator it will immediately summon up to like split into five of itself five clones and in that will be in a plus pattern and the thing about it is that if you copy like a range operator with high damage per hit you're basically five times the damage output as a as like five range operators are all attacking at once so let's say if you copy um who i typically copy typically copy um would be far tooth you would have five far tooth all attacking at the same time can you imagine the damage output that can do and because there is five units on the ground so while well, some will be on the ground for sure that also means that you also have five blocks if done correctly so this skill not only blocks enemies you will have tons of damage and you can just also stun enemies for one uh no you can bind enemies for 1.5 seconds with they're using a range if it is copying a range operator so you get control you get damage and you get block this is like the perfect skill for copying range operators i would consider now where's the caveat because i said about like how this banner is really complicated and whatnot right why, why? um you remember how i said you want to summon milsis and then you want to deploy her summon and then you want to copy her and then you activate the skill and then have five clones all at once do your math how many tiles do you need for that to happen you need six usable tiles you will occupy six usable tiles in a really compact area and when do you actually have that many tiles to use and you don't forget you have other operators Mulesis cannot do everything alone she ha you, you, you still got to do your typical blocking operators medic and then your Min well, minar i assume and then you maybe want to quick drop a quick uh, quick replay like texas altar how many tiles can you really fit in there now that's assuming you want to put Mulesis really close to your defense line right maybe you want to put the put her afar right you want to put everyone behind and you put mules alone of, like in the front line what is going to happen is the summons are going to block enemies and then they just won't come over and then they won't be hit by Menar. so a lot of the situations a lot of the maps that comes out later on or before you just don't have those perfect like good looking maps that you can just use her properly and so in the end even though we really we truly believe that Mewsis is a really good operator but because of how awkward she is when you want if you want to fully like use up all her potentials it makes her really hard to put down and that is basically why i said that this banner is really hard to recommend to pull because it's just like well both of these operators i basically never use i'm going to be really honest i use them in is i use them in roguelike that's about it i tried to use them before because i want to try them out but eventually i just replace them with other operators i just bring in s if i really want if i want an extra vanguard other than my typical flag bearer operator my strategy 
and if i really want to deal damage i have other operators that can deal damage that is just way more convenient to place down so that is that but there is more if, if, it, if it's only just that i would highly recommend you to not pull right why would i say it's complicated now the thing about it is after the end of this event which is announced to be ending at 28th of no of november if i read the um stream if i read it correctly 28th of november is the end and then we're gonna get the new cc thing that is technically not cc but basically cc thing early december which is going to play out for two weeks so let's say if we're gonna end that event at let's say 20th of december we have 25 days from then till anniversary 20 ish days till anniversary like 25 to 27 days ish to anniversary what does that mean we will get one banner a rerun and then next limited banner and most likely this is just my guess because um a lot of well, because of other situations i would highly think i would i believe truly believe that that banner will be executed order because um if they want to bring out another really popular operator typhoon i actually think they would bring her out with is4 which is not coming out after the anniversary i would assume if that's the case by the way i believe um executor altar is skippable if you go all in even if you go all in in this banner you're like i i just want to spend every pull day one of this of this event right and then after you go all in and you start saving you will have two and a half months roughly to save up till the next limited banner how many pulls can we save up in two and a half months so knowing that it doesn't really hurt if you pull in this banner but obviously that is going to depend on you if you want to go for 300 pulls in that limited banner so you can get um let's say some limited operators that will be only doing having um a rerun not really rerun, but will be in the limited banner by then but not in here but that will really be up to your amount of pulls and the goal that you want to achieve so who should put this back so who should put pull this banner if you're a waifu collector you want muses you want whole hair go ahead won't stop you if you play is i wouldn't actually recommend trying them because i think they're really good um if you're a limited collector yes i would say that if you have more than 300 pulls right now i would say just go for it because you will have plenty of time to save for the next limited banner and get yourself back up to 300 pulls so that's about it for this video um it ended up being a bit longer than i expected i just got too excited talking about these operators i guess so um hopefully you guys find this video helpful and i guess i'll see you guys in the next time where i'm going to be punished by your staff for not recommending this banner because they always spy on my videos and whenever i not, not, not recommend a operator or banner they will just punish me and give me the worst pulls i'm basically going to guarantee 300 pulls yay i'll see you guys then bye